Apart from his wife and children, I knew Trump better than anyone else did. In some ways, I knew him better than even his own family did. Because I bore witness to the real man in strip clubs, shady business meetings, and in the unguarded moments when he revealed who he really was, a cheat, a liar, a fraud, a bully, a racist, a predator, and a con man. Trump would say so many things that were illogical or just plain bullshit, as we consciously would know, but we would stay on his message. Even though we knew it was nonsense, we would repeat what he said as if it were true. And then we'd repeat the message to one another so often that it would actually begin to believe the distortions ourselves. He frequently commented on the amount of money I had as a way to throw it in my face that he was so much richer than me. It was like water off a duck's back to me, but it fed his need to demean people around him who had the temerity to get ahead in life. Success was always a zero-sum game for him, and he and he alone had to be the winner. From golden showers in his sex club, in Vegas, to tax fraud, to deals with corrupt officials from the former Soviet Union, to catch and kill conspiracies, to silent Trump's clandestine lovers. I wasn't just a witness to the president's rise. I was an active and eager participant. Both sides were wrong. I knew that the reality was much more complicated and dangerous. Trump had colluded with the Russians, not in the sophisticated way imagined by his detractors. Trump had cheated in the election with Russian connivance because doing anything, and I mean anything, to win has always been the business model and way of life. Trump had also continued to pursue a major real estate deal in Moscow during the campaign. He attempted to insinuate himself into the world of President Vladimir Putin and his coterie of corrupt billionaire oligarchs. I know because I personally ran that deal and kept Trump and his children closely informed of all updates. Even as the candidate blatantly lied to the American people saying, there's no Russian collusion, I have no dealings with Russia. Whoever follows Trump into the White House, if the president doesn't manage to make himself the leader of, for life, as he has started to joke about, and Trump never jokes, will discover a tangle of frauds and scams, lawlessness. There's a serious danger that Donald Trump will not leave office easily. And there's a real chance of not having a peaceful transition. As the election wore on, I began to believe that Trump secretly wanted Putin's kind of power for himself, which is part of why I'm convinced he won't leave the office voluntarily. To Trump, Putin was like a Saudi royal family or Kim Jong-un in North Korea, the incarnation of dynastic wealth and the real ruling class of the planet. Everyone other than the ruling class on the earth was like an ant to his way of thinking. Their lives meaningless and always subject to the whims of the true rulers of the world. The thing that astounded me and still does to this day was that the media didn't see that they were being played for suckers. They didn't realize the damage were inflicting on the country by following Trump around like supplicants. Business in New York has always been hard edged with the opening bid in negotiations, typically starting with the exchange of fuck you and the threat of litigation. No tactic or ruse was too low, including preying on the weak or vulnerable. In fact, that became Trump's business model, perhaps because he'd gone broke so many times himself, only to be bailed out by his daddy, that he knew just how defenseless the insolvent really are. But that wasn't the end of the Durrell story, not by a long shot. The painting contractor eventually walked off the job, no doubt in frustration and not being paid in a timely fashion. Scores of small contractors had to sue Trump over the years to try to get justice against a billionaire who has absolutely no compunction about screwing the little guy. I know, because I was often the one tasked with doing such low-life things to innocent and honest business people, providing goods and services to the Trump organization. It's not just an embarrassment 
to the Republican Party, but to the country. I would even expand it and say we're becoming almost like an embarrassment to the world. When you have a person who's going to be the leader of one or two political parties, I mean, it's so bizarre. It's so batshit crazy. And you can even see the faces or you see the body language of the people that are there at those various rallies when he starts to talk about Hannibal Lecter. They're like, what the fuck? What's he talking about? Do you know what Donald's favorite movie is? Deliverance. When we'd be on the airplane and he'd be like, all right, we're going to watch Deliverance. Well, we watched that going the other way. Why are we watching it again? Let's watch something else. But when he starts talking about deliverance, listen, there's a lot about that movie, right? The banjo in the woods and so on. Squeal like a pig. I don't know what it is, but he loves that movie. There's something very seriously wrong. The only difference is in those days when his mental faculties were significantly better than they are today, he wouldn't openly discuss it as he does now, let alone at political rallies. You have a political party, the Republican Party, that has become a cult, whose leader is talking about Hannibal Lecter. He's musing about having romantic relationships with Nancy Pelosi, saying that the Department of Justice are dirty, no good bastards. This is what Trump says, dirty, no good bastards. And Taylor Swift, why doesn't Taylor Swift support me? Why is she endorsing the dope? He doesn't know how to get off the stage. He's telling stories about getting eaten by sharks or being electrocuted or talking about connections to MIT because he has an uncle who taught there and stopped teaching about 1975. The point is that the corporate media has normalized a very weird and deranged and unhinged politics as just the other side. And it isn't. It's not even politics. It's freaking deranged cult behavior. It's not Republican. It's just weirdo cult stuff. And we need to all unite, put on our objective caps and call it for what it is and recognize the existential threat. The biggest influence by far by a country mile was the media. Donald Trump's presidency is a product of the free press, not free as in freedom of expression. I mean free as in unpaid for. Rallies broadcast live, tweets, press conferences, idiotic interviews, 24-7, wall-to-wall coverage, all without spending a penny. The free press gave America Trump. The cosmic joke was that Trump convinced of vast swath of working class white folks in the Midwest that he cared about their well-being. The truth was that he couldn't care less. I don't mean that as a speculation or an opinion. That was a stone cold fact during the 2016 campaign and throughout Trump's presidency to this very day. To Trump, his voters are his audience, his chumps, his patsies, his base. Guns, criminalizing abortion. Trump took up those conservative positions, not because he believed in them, but because they were his path to power. That's what I meant when I told the Congress that Trump is a con man. He said, I will never get the Hispanic vote. Like the blacks, they're too stupid to vote for Trump. They're not my people.